I think it's not a simple matter of trying to set this flag or examine this flag, but look at all sorts of other indicators which show what the flag should have been before they can reject it. Um, it's very difficult to do this correctly because if you do it wrong, then suddenly you've got 10,000 people who aren't able to withdraw cash, and then that makes them very, very upset. Uh, I have another question from the IRC. After so much concentrated uh, incompetence by the banks, don't you think it's time for a full disclosure response? Publish the entire tax setup to put some more shame and pressure on them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's difficult to know what to do in this situation. We've had, this is not the first time we've found a run the bill of a chip and pin. And what we've always done is given them a, a few months' notice to see what would happen. Um, I don't think in any of that, those cases they've fixed it within that time period, and often they haven't fixed it at all, like most of the banks here. Um, I don't know what is the best thing to do. Uh, it seems that the regulators in the UK are not very interested in pushing the banks to, to do anything here. But in terms of publication, um, we haven't published the attack code, but um, when I went to implement this, this was like three extra lines. So once you know what you're doing, it's not very difficult. Um, literally, you just need to see whether the command coming in is a request to verify the PIN, which I think is 0020. And if it's 0020, then you return 9000, because 9000 is a success code. So I don't think there's any obstacle for criminals from doing this, whether we told them or not. OK, just one little additional question. Now. Does that mean that we have basically have to trust the bank to figure out if this transaction was, uh, was real or is there anything we can do ourselves? There's a fairly limited amount of thing, uh, things that the customer can do. Um, almost everything relies on the bank logs. Um, and often these are not kept um, or they're not interpreted correctly. So I was an expert witness in one court case where the bank lost almost all of the logs for that and they just had one byte left which said what was going on but they wouldn't be able to give us an instruction manual which explained what that byte really meant. So they just effectively said that um, to be, to, if it says to be it means the client's guilty um, and he lost that court case. Uh, there are a few things that you can do and one thing is that if you're the victim of um, any sort of phantom withdrawal, um, fraudulent transaction, the bank will ask you to cut up your card. Don't do this. Because one thing that your card does contain is a counter of how many transactions it started. And if, say, for example, um, you've used your card um, 10 times, um, and then the bank shows 20 transactions, 10 of which are fraudulent, then you now have quite good proof that it wasn't your card in, in use. Um, it doesn't work all the time because your card will increase this transaction each time you plug it into any sort of system which reads it. So it's not f foolproof, but it's better than nothing. So it's definitely a good idea to keep your card around if anything goes wrong with it. Um, also, there's a facility in the specification for the card storing a log of recent transactions, and that would be very good for consumer protection. Um, I haven't seen any card which actually does this. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? Yep. Um, how do you see skimming? Um, because I, s I think it's much easier to skim a card and then with your attack because um, you have to get, get your card to, to your attack and with skimming you just grab the data and grab the pin and make a new card and draw some cash from, from the ATM. Skimming used to work very well. And that was the reason that counterfeit fraud did not go down. It doesn't work quite as well as it used to. Um, the public figures from the bank, or a public statement from the bank, is that they no longer accept um, MagStripe only transactions. So if you copy the MagStripe, then you shouldn't be able to use it in an ATM. Now, they've said that, I think, two other times, and it turned out they were wrong. We haven't checked them the third time they said it. Last month, I've been a uh, victim of uh, skimming. So uh, last month, so okay. Yeah. In what it's what country was the card used? Uh, Canada. Okay, so Canada is one of the, the last countries, apart from the US, which is moving towards chip and pin. Um, so I think they will probably in 
five years' time be in the position. They want some South America. Yeah. <laughs> seems to be another country in South America, I, I don't remember. Police said there is, uh, I don't know, Mexico or something else. Yeah. So there are still countries where that will work. Um, within Europe, I think Italy was the last one to move to full chip and pin. And what that's now causing the banks to do is to view MagStripe transaction as being a lot more suspicious than it used to. Um, so it tunes their fraud detection algorithm a little bit. To, so that they will be more likely to reject a transaction if it's MagStripe only. Um, I'm not too worried about that because that's a decision the bank has to make of, on the basis of risk versus a reward, provided they are going to pay, out, um, pay back to the customer when they're the victim of fraud in that case. Um, the situation I'm worried about is where the bank computer systems don't adequately distinguish between MagStripe transactions and chip transactions, in which case the customer might lose out. So I think it would be quite interesting to see um, whether banks are going to, um, whether the first line support of banks are able to answer that question correctly. This is a very difficult thing to do legally because the appropriate experiment would be um, we would do a bunch of MagStripe transactions as if it was skimming and then call up the bank and say it wasn't me and then see how many of those we get their money back. Um, that might be considered fraud, so it's not something that we've done. Another IRC question. Mm -hmm. Are you aware of anybody developing a wireless device for the Technic? I'm not aware of anyone doing that, but I don't think it's very difficult. Uh, the communication line is um, half duplex, it's 10 kilobits a second, so I think it's well within the capabilities of anyone competent who's doing radio. Um, you would hardly need any components in the fake card uh, because it's going to be such short range and the card already has a 5 volt power supply. Um, so I don't think it would be hard. We haven't done it. We're probably not going to do it, but I don't think it would be difficult. Will you tell us which UK bank has fixed the problem? Barclays. Okay. <laughs> um, so what you created has a certain potential of um, criminal usage and my question was if we want to investigate things in the same corner or what things measures do we need to to take beforehand or have you taken uh, to prove that we want to do white hat research and protect from uh, criminal investigation so it's, it's very useful to do this work as part of a university um, you do have um, quite a lot of history that you can go back to and you can quote to Newton and Darwin and Erasmus. So I think being with a, a university helps. Um, okay, and the other thing you can do is involve the press. So for example, um, another part of the letter from the UK Cards Authority was saying that that demonstration that Omar did um, was um, the police had expressed concern. But the advantage that we had is we had a person with a camera standing behind for the entire duration. So firstly, they could see what was going on. And the important thing is that nobody lost out. Um, the journal, it was a journalist card which was used, and um, he authorized what was going on. Um, the, pers the journalist received the goods that he wanted, and also the the merchant who sold the goods got their money. So no one made any profit out of it. It was all very publicly known and it looks like it, it was not anything underhanded. So I think try to involve the press and the university where possible. And a lawyer. <laughs> Um, hello, I have a question. Um, have you come up with anything in your research that would enable the creation of a card that uh, verifies all transactions uh, without any man in the middle attack or any active involvement? Um, what do you mean verifying all transactions? Uh, like uh, an always on state, just uh, send yes, the pin was correct, the pin was required, send that information to the terminal and um, end the transaction positively. 
Um, so this is that a cloned card, or is is this um, a completely cloned card? Uh, for instance, yes. So we haven't tried what would happen if the card sends the wrong Mac back. Um, that's in principle the bank could deny the transaction. We're not sure whether they actually are going to do so. And the card can also send a whole bunch of other flags. Um, so it can say that um, I don't need a certificate. Uh, we don't know what will happen in those cases. Um, it can also say that I can never go online and will the, ter will the merchant terminal reject the transaction or, or just allow it. Um, I think this all comes from EMV being so complicated. There are many, many options which are not being used, doesn't really make sense to use, and it's hard to know how the terminals and the bank systems actually deal with them. Uh, IRC is asking, what reasons are there to keep this specification secret other than their proprietary content? Um, I haven't seen any rationale given for, for why this change has, has come into place, because they're, they're, they're not secret in a good way. Their secret is in that researchers are not able to get access to them. But pretty much everyone who works for a company which is willing to sign a bit of paper is able to get access to them. So it could be that the banks would claim, or the specification owners would claim, that this is to stop criminals getting their hands on it. But I don't think that is actually very effective. Um, criminals would just have to lie on a bit of paper and then they'd get a copy of the specifications. Uh, I don't think there's... Um, very much commercially sensitive information in these things. Uh, the protocol is very, very similar to EMV, which is already public. There's just a few extra command parameters in here. So I think um, it's probably more institutional culture that secrecy is good rather than any well thought out threat um, uh, risk analysis decision.